Okay, yesterday, the Virginia political guru, Larry Sabato, rejiggered his ratings on a whole bunch of different states and a whole bunch of different races for this election. And all of the rejiggerings were almost all in the Democrats' favor. So in the case of the presidential race, everything he moved was toward President Obama. He had previously rated as a toss-up uh, the states of Iowa, Nevada, Ohio, Virginia, and Wisconsin. Now he says they all lean Democratic. He already had leaning Democratic, the states of Michigan and Pennsylvania. Now his new rating says those don't just lean Democratic, they are likely Democratic. And that's sort of the step-by-step -step continuum for these kinds of ratings. You go from toss-up to leaning to likely to solid. And as people readjust their ratings over time, the adjustment is basically always that the race just shifts one column over, from a toss-up to a lean or from a lean to a likely. But in one race, in Larry Sabato's recent rankings, he jumps all the way. He takes an incumbent Republican congressman and he jumps his race from leaning Republican all the way over to leaning Democrat. He doesn't just give him a squishy, squishy shift to a toss-up. He says this guy, who he ha was essentially predicting to win, he's now predicting to lose. This is a dramatic shift. What is going on here in this race to earn that dramatic shift? Michael Putney with Whoa, we reporters can be unwelcome guests sometimes, and today was no exception for our senior political reporter, Michael Putney. Michael got splashed with water by the wife of a political candidate who's under investigation by the FBI. The woman who threw the water is married to Justin Lamar Sternad, a Democrat who ran for Congress in the August primary. He came in third place in the race for the right to run against Republican David Rivera, who now appears to be in a heap of trouble. Our now dried out reporter and a very <laughs> dapper one, Michael Putney, here on to explain what this dousing incident was all about and who exactly is in trouble with the law. Well, I think we could start with Congressman Rivera. He certainly is in trouble, as well as Justin Lamar's turn ad, who we are told now is singing at the top of his lungs to the FBI about how David Rivera reportedly financed Sternad's campaign. I'm sorry to bother you. I'm Michael Putney with Channel 10 with Justin <laughs> And when Mrs. Sternad opened the door, I got drenched. So as you can see, we are all wet, and Justin Lamar Sternad is not talking. If he is home, his wife threw the water on me. We do know, however, that Mr. Sternad is talking to the FBI. And Sternad is reportedly saying that Congressman David Rivera secretly strategized and paid for the Democrats' campaign. If true, that would be a criminal conspiracy. That was veteran South Florida political reporter Michael Putney of the Miami TV station WPLG, obviously getting water thrown all over him as he tries to figure out whether Congressman David Rivera is in trouble with the FBI uh, for this, too. I mean, Congressman David Rivera has already been under investigation by the FBI, the IRS, the Miami-Dade Police Department's Public Corruption Unit, the Miami-Dade State Attorney's Office, and the Florida Department of Law Enforcement uh, over financial disclosure issues and allegations that he abused the powers of his office back when he was just a state legislator. But now that David Rivera has moved up in the world and he is a member of Congress, now the investigations into Republican David Rivera are getting way more interesting. Something um, kind of weird happened in South Florida when it came time for the Democrats to pick somebody in their primary to run against Congressman David Rivera. Uh, there was the candidate who everybody expected who had run hard against Mr. Rivera in the past. Uh, that was this guy, Joe Garcia. Uh, but then, in addition to Joe Garcia, there was another candidate in the primary, kind of out of the blue, and that was this guy, who reported almost no fundraising and who personally had only a little over a hundred bucks in the bank, but who still somehow managed to put out really professionally done, professionally micro-targeted, high-end, well-researched campaign mailers, lots of different ones, to the tune of thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in campaign spending. Thousands and thousands of dollars in cash, it turns out, in crisp hundred dollar bills stuffed into envelopes. Where was all that money coming from? Well, here's how the Miami Herald puts it. During one call, Congressman David Rivera directed an employee to walk outside, check the office mailbox for an envelope containing payment for one mailer. The envelope was stuffed with cash, $7,800. The owner of the company doing the mailers then told the Herald, quote, I never saw so much cash. 
The story that's now reportedly being told to the FBI is that Congressman David Rivera used not just $7,800 in cash, but tens of thousands of dollars in cash to essentially create this fake Democratic candidacy that he really wanted to run against instead of Joe Garcia. And now the fake candidate who is cooperating with the FBI is facing a felony indictment. And his wife is throwing pitchers of water at venerable Florida political reporters. And David Rivera's seat in Congress is jumping all the way from Lean's Republican to Lean's Democrat. Democrat without a stop at toss up in the middle. And in the course of all the reporting on this incredibly sordid story from the Miami New Times and the local Miami TV stations and the Miami Herald and El Nuevo Herald, we learn the one detail of this story that will stick forever no matter what happens in this congressional race and no matter who goes to prison. The alleged conduit between the fake candidate and the congressman who was funding the fake candidate's campaign is a self-described Republican political guru and conservative bad girl who is now missing and who's wanted for questioning in the case. We learned from the Miami Herald this week that when she talked to the fake candidate guy about who this mysterious benefactor was who was paying for everything in his campaign, he says she never said the words David Rivera. She called him by his initials DR. Or when she wasn't calling him by his initials, she called him by his nickname. The Gangster. His nickname is The Gangster, which is not a very nice nickname. It should probably be Congressman Gangster. <laughs> we will see. But as I said, the David Rivera race now leans Democratic. That does it for us tonight. We will see you again Monday night. Now it's time for Hardball with Chris Matthews, which is not prison. It's a whole different thing. Have a great night.